stuff. We're expensing the materials, the direct labor, and all the overhead, all the rents and stuff that we applied to this particular job. We're expensing at this point in time in the form of cost of goods sold because that's the point in time that it helped us to generate revenue. And that's the point in time we expense things under the matching principle, which is an accrual principle. So 186,000. So we're gonna scroll over here. 186,000, credit 186,000. Also note that these two things basically happen at the same point in time, but it's a lot easier most of the time to think of them as two separate journal entries. So we're gonna think of the sales half, cash and sales, and then the reduction of inventory and the recording the cost of goods sold as two entries, even though they're happening at the same point of time. So I'm gonna make this smaller, back down to 80. We're gonna post this out. We're gonna post cash first. Scroll over here a bit. So here's cash. Here's cash on the trial balance. We are in the debit side. So we are in Q13 and point to the cash of the 380, bringing our balance back up to 534. Now we're gonna repost the sales. So here's sales here, here's sales way down here. So it's gonna be way over here in the dark blue, first dark blue in AD. So it's in AD 13. So I'm gonna select equals and go way back over here to the 380 and that's gonna hit enter. And what that does is it increased the sales. So notice that increase of sales, it's represented by a credit, that's not a negative number. Net income is now including just that number. So all this stuff that we've done, we haven't recorded any expenses, even though we've paid the utility bill and we've paid uh, certain salaries and whatnot because all that went into our assets up here. So we only have revenue at this time until of course we re-report and record the cost of goods sold. So here's the cost of goods sold. Here it is on our income statement. It's gonna be over here, way over here on the uh, general ledger. It's gonna be a debit in AC18 and equals, and we're gonna to point to that 186 and enter. So note that the net income on this transaction is the revenue we got as 380 minus the cost of goods sold, 186. We've got the 194,000. Again, that 186 includes so many things that we've been talking about, right? It's, it's got the direct labor, it's got the uh, direct materials, it's got the overhead. All right, so then we have the uh, finished goods is here, finished goods is here on the trial balance, and finished goods is over here on the general ledger. We are in V19 equals pointing to the 186,000, brings the finished goods down. So now we have in finished goods just the 314. If we scroll over to our jobs, all that's in the finished goods is the 314 now. We still have uh, in open jobs, just job 16 of the six, uh, 260. And in the work in progress, we have the 186. Okay, so then we're gonna have one more thing happen here. So we're gonna make this larger, we're almost done. We're all, we almost have to stop because we have completed this very uh, entertaining problem. So now we're down to adjust for any under appropriated or over appropriate factory overhead. All right, so what are they talking about? So remember, if we if we look at the factory overhead, then we're done with uh, the, the the period here, and uh, we have three thousand negative in factory three thousand credit in factory overhead. What does that mean? Well, if we think of factory overhead kind of like uh, uh, part of inventory, it's part of the uh, work in process and the raw materials, the finished goods and overhead are all the things that kind of we're using to uh, record inventory. The work in process is where we put a bunch of stuff, all the stuff we couldn't apply to the job, and then we applied it to the jobs in the using a, a predetermined rate. Now that predetermined rate is just an estimate. We had to come up with an estimate. An estimate is never going to be perfect. And therefore, in this case, we applied out more to the jobs based on the predetermined rate than we actually expensed or included or debited or increased factory overhead by. So we over applied the factory overhead. Now, there's a couple of ways we can treat that. Usually if we say, hey, that factory overhead is pretty small, we, we were pretty close, 3,000 in relation to the rest of the numbers isn't too far off, then uh, we just wanna make that zero so that when we start over next month, it's, the, it's at zero. We don't wanna start off with 3,000 in it. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, make that go to zero and we're gonna put the difference to cost of goods sold. So this is going to look kind of like a funny entry. Uh, it could, it, it's going to go the wrong way, meaning it's going, to, it's going to be a credit to cost of goods sold, which is unusual because cost of goods sold is an expense basically, and it usually only goes up in the debit direction. But the reasoning be behind this is that you know it's just an estimate. 
uh, and the uh, related account on the income statement that will then clear out to retained earnings so we'll never have to look at it again is cost of goods sold and because it's insignificant then in relation to the other numbers it's immaterial let's just clean it out to the income statement the related account being cost of goods sold close it out to retained earnings and therefore we'll, we won't have to worry about it again when we start the next month over so uh, idea being that as of the end of the month 131 we have a credit balance in here because the factory overhead was over applied we need to make it go down to zero how do we make something go down we do the opposite thing to it which in this case is a debit so i'm going to copy that we're going to put it on top in cell h19 right click paste one two three debit for the three thousand we're going to credit something and again what are we going to credit ah, we're just going to plug it into cost of goods sold therefore it'll be closed out and we'll, uh, we'll never see it again and so we're going to put it in the cost of goods sold notice cost of goods sold has a uh, debit balance it usually only goes up you almost never credit cost of goods sold this is an exception to the rule that we're actually going to credit cost of goods sold so we're going to copy that we're going to put that in h20 right click and paste it one two three going to make this a little smaller back down to 80 scroll back over here here's the factory overhead in i19 here's the factory overhead down here in uh you in column u and we're way down here and we're gonna we have the credit balance we have this 3000 in it i'm down here in v31 and we're gonna say equals and point to that debit and what we want to happen is for this 3000 to hopefully go down to zero so we've cleaned that out we're out of we're out of balance by the 3000 of course now here's the cost of goods that's where we're gonna just plug the difference here's the cost of goods on the trial balance way over here last count over here on the general ledger so we're going to credit it which is kind of weird but it's okay this is the exception to the rule equals i'm in ad19 pointing to that 3000 and enter so notice that affects net income by by the 3000 there for that adjustment and uh so there there we have it and that's it